like the Roman cow, who only gave conversations about monkeys they could break the It's also a fair question to ask 17 year olds who walk through college still wearing a monkey cap who don't get into conversation but would much prefer to talk about monkeys they can crush the As you can probably tell by now, I'm somewhat of a primary fanatic. There are many words I could use, but that's probably going to fill in for now. Something that tends to disappoint most people though is I don't have an answer to that question because I really cannot pick a favourite primate. Something that I want to make really obvious to you guys is just how extraordinary and valuable every single different primate species is and why I just can't pick one. The passion I have for primates, ranging from 100 gram baby mums to 180 kilograms of back gorillas, is what draws me to primate conservation, or what makes me so passionate about it. Of course, passion is a wide issue concern of the species, especially mums with so many friends. But I think passion like mine is a driving force in many similar endeavours. And passion, even if it is a bit of overbearing at times like mine, is vital and has an impact. I think an example of this can be seen by three main role models who at some point throughout what multiple parts of their lives converge with the leading brains of paranatology and nicknamed the primates. First, you probably shall guess, who was known for her work with orangutans in Borneo. She is also known for the formation of the Orangutan Foundation International. She is now 77 years old and continues to work with orangutans through conservation and lectures. Another admirable woman is Diane Fossey. She is known for her work with gorillas in Rwanda and she was very good in helping to achieve a positive public perception about gorillas <laughs> and um, to help increase our knowledge of the species. She was specifically known for her work against poachers, which are common threats to many primate species. Last but most definitely not least is Jane Goodall. Her work with chimpanzees is known to have changed the field of ecology forever in the way that we go about field research. She's also a hard member of one of my favourite quotes after she has done a chimpanzee with tools. I've written and so wrote and such in a letter to a sleepy, and then he even said to a crowd, We must redefine tool, redefine man, or accept chimpanzees as human. I think this quote is really important, understanding that we can't separate ourselves from rapidly animal kingdom if we want to have a positive impact on them. These women, I feel like I might be assumed, share my passion when it comes to primates and primate conservation. Now, you know, as much as I love viewing passion as the driving force for many things, it's not a very good way to convince everyone of why primate conservation is so important. But of course, at the root of my passion are those key foundations and reasoning which others may use to argue for why this is such an important endeavour. Now, before I get into that, I think it's best to briefly discuss what time it is. And I say briefly because otherwise I could be going on for literal hours. <laughs> when asked me what is your favourite primate question, if someone's really persistent in their questioning, doesn't accept the fact that I cannot pick one, I will go through all the different groups in the order of primate and discuss which one would be rooting for that top spot if I'm a little bit more decisive. Which truly, I'm, I'm not very decisive. Within primates, the three main groups are monkeys, apes, and prosimians. Within monkeys, you can split this further into new world monkeys and old world monkeys. New world monkeys can be found in the Americas, but often smaller in size than long tails or tails. Old world monkeys are often larger in size and smaller tails, and they show many more characteristics with apes as they do show an instant order with them. Apes, I think, are some of the most well known primate species. Mainly, we can partly credit this to work with primates and species they study gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees can be found in great apes, along with humans and bonobos. Bonobos are also sometimes nicknamed pygmy chimpanzees, which can then be surprise many people when they find out the amount of DNA that is shared between the chimpanzees and bonobos is in the exact same amount of DNA that is shared between humans and chimpanzees. Finally, slightly more separate from monkeys and apes and prosimians, they share many key characteristics different from the other primates. I think we can credit this towards the fact that they separated from the primate and released a branch in the crustace late crustaceous period, whereas monkeys and apes only separated from each other 30 million years later in the Eocene period. Some prosimians contain lemurs and lorises and can be found across Africa and Asia, but many, most lemur species are found in Madagascar. Many of the key differences can be attributed to the fact that prosimians don't seem to favour the sense of sight as it's seen in monkeys and apes. You can see these lemurs with their long snout like your nose is an incomplete post-orbital bar behind the eyes. When this post-orbital bar is complete, it's stayed by the fission during eating. When discussing the different inter-orders, orders, subfamilies, and families of primates, I think it really 
demonstrate the variety within this species, and to me that's what makes them so extraordinary, the different species, how separate they are from one another. And to me it's the kind of variety that should be conserved. <coughs> Thank you. 